Now, how close are we to a kind of space travel on Earth? A super-fast network that would allow us to cover huge distances in no time at all. Well, here on BBC World News, we've been reporting on the billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk's vision for Hyperloop that could get you from, say, LA to San Francisco in just half an hour. The problem is he doesn't have time to actually build it. But in the United States, a company called ET3 says it is ready to build a prototype for a similar system. They say their super-fast tube network could allow us to travel from New York to Beijing eventually in just two hours. Well, let's uh, speak to Nick Garzilli, the chief operating officer at uh, ET3. That's uh, quite a statement, two hours. Uh, how are you going to do it? And is the technology advanced enough to actually practically be able to implement something like this? The technology is mature and we're shovel ready at 400 miles per hour. Uh, of course, getting up to 4,000 and having the, the international backbone that would cut through Canada, through Alaska, down, down through uh, Russia and basically all the way to the world to end in London, um, that, that, you know, probably about 15, 25 years before you see that. But we're ready. We're, we are very close to, to getting, securing our, our location for our demo, which is a, it'll be a three mile demo, uh, 400 mile per hour solar powered ride. So we're going to open up to the public. My view is when you have a five-year-old and his grandma ride this, the world changes. Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing is, I mean, it's, it sounds like something out of a theme park where you have that huge acceleration, but it's the infrastructure which is going to be an eyesore, isn't it, and expensive to, to, to build. Um, well, when you talk about a theme park, yes, it's the same electric linear motors, but theme parks are 4.2 Gs of acceleration. ET3 always maintains 1 G of acceleration, so it, it'll be quite tolerable. As far as an eyesore, you know, we can grow ivy on this, put trees underneath of it. If it goes through a, through a, through a street, you know, it can go over a sidewalk. That, you know, we, we erect it. It's not like a train. You, you, you know, we're used to large overpasses of motorways and trains and, you know, airports and plane, you know, planes, uh, you know, buzzing over our houses. So I, I think, you know, ET3 is totally silent. Um, it's, there's no ground vibration. But, but say um, crossing you know, try a, screaming in space. Yeah. yeah, but crossing a huge ocean like the Pacific or the Atlantic or something like that, what do you do? You just have to sink these pylons in the water to get those tubes to go across? No, no. It, we going going through the ocean is is seven times more expensive. That's why we go through Canada via the Bering Strait. The Bering Strait's only 90 miles uh, wide and about 200 feet deep ocean floor there, so we can bore right under it. Anything over 600 miles an hour will most likely be underground. And and um, you know, so like London to Glasgow in 30 minutes, that would be an underground back, backbone. My goodness, but, but it'd be expensive though, wouldn't it, to do that underground to actually build those tunnels? It's, it's actually quite cheap. Uh, so ET3 is one-tenth the cost of high-speed rail. Um, and and the, the hole is, is much smaller than you would have to do for, for a train as well. So it, it's actually incredibly cheap. Going underground is about three times as expensive as above ground. Okay. And uh, in terms of the green side of this as well, is this what you would advocate as the, uh, of the transportation of the future? Because presumably you're not burning fossil fuels, are you? Oh, uh, yeah. It's a, it's, this is the greenest form of transport on the planet, 50 times more energy efficient than the most efficient electric car or train. So compared to a car or SUV, you're talking like 300 times. Um, so when you, get rid of, when you get rid of the air resistance, you get rid of the rolling resistance, and you bring space travel conditions to Earth, incredibly green, incredibly fast. So, so what is holding you back, Nick? Why hasn't this already been built somewhere? It's, you know, what, what held back cell phones from decades from taking root. Really, it's we need the right framework so innovation and tinkering can take can take place. You know, right now, you know, it's 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 business as usual with, you know, taxpayer funded programs and everyone at the trough. You know, they're trying to put a train here in California. I know they're trying to do it in England as well. Um, but this can all be privately financed. And we actually want to pay um, 5 percent to the rights of way holder and the people that live near the two. So, so, so really, so, it's just so political. It's, just thinking. Po it's politicians. Yeah. Yeah. So, so political, it's political thinking, it's, political, it's political thinking is old fashioned. Nobody's looking forward. Well, yeah, and this isn't, you know, this is, shouldn't be something that divides us because uh, the people on the left who are green love the environmental part. The people on the right will love the free market part because it can all be privately financed and actually create revenue for, for governments. So I think eventually people are going to wake up, and I'm so glad that I'm on your program right now because the only thing holding us back is awareness and people spreading the word with their, their neighbors and friends and family and then going to their politicians from local all the way up to, the, to their president saying, you know, let, you know, let, let's let these technologies be free.
Let's let let's let's start innovation. So I'm all thinking about the legalization of of transportation innovation. So that that's kind of the slogan that that Mr. Musk has really led the way on, and, and just talking about other technologies that are there to save us. So thank you, Mr. Musk.